so the focus of my senior project is addiction awareness. The goals of my project, I want to help make addiction less of a problem in New Hampshire and for our society. I want to help support organizations that work towards this and spread awareness on the issue to people who do not understand right now. Why did I choose this? It's a very large problem in New Hampshire right now. We have very high alcohol and drug addiction rates. I've seen many people through research, media, and some that I know fall into this disease, and many of them struggle to find recovery. This not only makes them suffer, but their family and loved ones do as well. There are far too many overdose deaths in our state because of the rise of heroin addiction. So what I did for my project, I started out working with the Bo Dunbarton Community Coalition. I went to their meetings and helped them plan a film screening of anonymous people. I then heard about Hope for New Hampshire Recovery, and I contacted them and was able to organize a volunteering with them. I had contacted several other rehab facilities before this, but Due to confidentiality laws, many trained specialists are allowed there. But Hope for New Hampshire Recovery is a recovery community, not a rehab. So that's why I was allowed to volunteer for them. So anonymous film, the Anonymous People Film Screening was a big event that the coalition put on on March 22nd. They showed the film in this auditorium as many people who wanted to show up to come see me and hear the message. This film spreads the message that our society needs to remove the stigmas associated with addiction and encourage recovery so that others will come out and seek help. The other message is that everyone in some way has their lives touched by addiction, whether they suffer from it, a family member or a friend does. Everyone knows someone who suffers from addiction. Hope for New Hampshire Recovery. I volunteered before it opened by helping them paint the interior when they had just bought the building from the previous owners. One of the first things I did when I started volunteering was help design a flyer for a job skills class that they offer there. And then I also helped them make spreadsheets to keep track of information that they need to record every day and also helped record the information organize it so that way they had everything that they needed on hand. The essential question for my research is, what does our society as a whole need to understand about addiction science and effective treatment in order to integrate effective treatment that maintains recovery? So some of the things that I learned from my research is addiction is a brain disease. Once someone has developed an addiction, it becomes involuntary. Although the initial drug use was a choice, once the person becomes addicted, it is no longer a voluntary act. This happens because addictive drugs trip the motivation center of our brain. The motivation center of our brain is the part of our brain that gives us the drive to achieve our basic survival needs. What it does is it releases a neurotransmitter called a dopamine, which makes us feel pleasure when we achieve our basic survival needs. So that way it gives us the drive to go out and achieve our needs, like food and water. But what addictive drugs do is they trick the brain into releasing excess levels of dopamine, which then over time, this excess dopamine will replace all existing motivators, making the sole motivation to use more drugs. This will then make the brain feel as if it needs the drug like a person needs food or water. This, uh, this will eventually make the person struggle to feel pleasure from natural things. Here's an example of that process with how cocaine interacts with the brain. What cocaine does is it blocks the dopamine transporter, which prevents re dopamine reuptake, which causes the excess levels of dopamine to be trapped in the synapses. This will eventually destroy the dopamine receptors of the body's natural
natural adjustment to having excess dopamine, which will make it even harder for people to find enjoyment from natural things and also from the drug as well, which leads to tolerance building up and neurotoxicity. Some of the effective treatment techniques that I researched were behavioral therapy, which is an attempt to work with the patient to find out the cause of what turned them to drug use. And it's trying to solve the problem Medication-assisted therapy is the use of safer medications that alleviate withdrawal symptoms, which are usually associated with opioid addiction. These medications are most commonly Suboxone and Methadone. They are, they are very low overdose rate drugs and are considered very safe for that reason, as well as they last a very long time, so the patient only one dose a day to keep the withdrawals away, while still being functional in their responsibilities, like a job or being a family member. A dual diagnosis treatment is one that addresses any co-occurring mental health disorders. If the person has co-occurring disorders, they will not be able to solve one without solving the other. A group talk therapy is when groups when a group of people in recovery talk to each other about their addiction and they provide each other support in their recovery. So they all work together towards the goal. And the last thing I have is not really a treatment technique, but it's an aspect of recovery that is very important, which is that a person needs to find an activity that they enjoy and that they can get pleasure from. So that way their brain will start to naturally release dopamine again and they'll find something that enjoy in their lives besides drug use. So the most common current system that we have has a few problems, which the most common system that we utilize is a 12-step program. Now, there are some good aspects in this, but there are also a few things that hold this system back. One of the most, one of the biggest problems with it is the emphasis on the person in recovery being powerless and too weak to overcome addiction on their own and the mystery that they need to turn to God in order to overcome it. This is not optimal because you want people in recovery to feel strong and empowered so they have the confidence to move forward in recovery and abstain from drug use. And also not everyone is religious so that might not apply to everyone. They also do not address dual diagnosis cases very well which is another important aspect of recovery because many addiction cases also have co-occurring mental health issues and if they just try to address the addiction, it won't go away because they have co-occurring disorder. And they also do not support medication-assisted treatment. They are actually very opposed to this because they do not want to use drugs to counter drug addiction. Now, while medication-assisted therapy is not a cure, it has its importance as it allows people to avoid using more dangerous alternatives and, is, and it is good to keep them healthy and decrease their mortality rates so they can continue in their road to recovery. And they also do not get a high from the medications from like Suboxone or Methadone. They just get enough of the new opioid receptor activity so that way their withdrawals have occurred and they can function in their lives. Many patients in the 12-step program have recurrences after they get out. So what is society's role in the fight against addiction? One of the most important things we need to do is remove the stigmas associated with this. If people feel like they will be ashamed and looked down upon because they have addiction, many of them will never come out to seek treatment because they do not want others to know. But rather than look down upon people, we have to accept recovery patients in our society just like we accept everyone else. The patients need to feel wanted and accepted so that way they know they are valuable and it increases their self-esteem. Self-esteem is a very important thing in recovery because people of higher self-esteem are more successful in avoiding drug use. We need to offer help instead of punishment for people who are addicted. Putting people with an addiction in jail does not solve the problem. They do not belong in 
in jail, but rather in a treatment to fix the problem. Or otherwise, when they're released, the problem will not be fixed, and they will just end up back in jail or back using drugs, and it won't just be an endless cycle. And our society needs to focus on more prevention programs. This was for everyone, but mostly, most importantly, is for children from a very young age. We need to educate them so they know that they know about drugs before the age that we start, which is usually around 13 years old. And this will make it easier to fight addiction because it's easier to stop an addiction before it begins than to stop one after it has developed. So the message that I want everyone to take away from this presentation is that addiction is a problem that requires everyone to work towards a solution. We must support patients in treatment and welcome them back to society. Addiction is not something that should be shame, that we should shame people for, but rather we should encourage the people who are seeking help and support them along the way. Everyone wants to be accepted and liked, and this is essential for people who suffer from addiction because many of them do not feel that and they feel like they are worthless. They have low, many have low self-esteem and they need to know that they matter to us and that we care. So what have I gained from the process of this project? This project has given me a confidence to complete large tasks and projects. Before, <coughs> I used to struggle with doing this and I used to think of large tasks to be too difficult and struggled with them. Now I know that if I apply myself and work hard at it, I can accomplish anything that I want to. I've also gained much organization skill through this project. Before I had started this project, all my backpack was was just a mess of loose papers and my Google Drive was just assorted documents in no order at all. Now I have binders to keep my, my papers in order and I organize my Google Drive into folders that keep track of all my documents. I have gained an ability to meet deadlines on time, especially when there are many deadlines moving along through this project. I was able to complete almost every assignment on time, which before was something that I struggled with. I also gained a lot of research skills and learned how to take the information from many different sources and extract what I need and find out what is relevant to my topic. And I've also gained the satisfaction of working with people that are helping others and being part of something that's a good cause for everyone.